What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during a season. Obviously you don't have to follow the tips this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those you out there who may be new to the game and just need a little bit of advice or for those of you out there who want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and if you are looking for your next Premier League career mode I mean is there a better team to use right now than the Clarets Burnley Football Club right now in the bottom three of the Premier League have just sacked long-serving manager Sean Dyche. And it came as a massive shock to everyone. Now, the Clarets are a four-star team in a game with a budget of around 26.5 to 26 and three quarter million to start off with in season one. And their objectives are reasonable. Finishing mid-table in the Premier League and reach the last 16 in the FA Cup. Now, Burnley, as we know, under Sean Dyche, had their play style performed above expectations for years, uh, had a really strong knitting close core of players there was very little change with Burnley in terms of play style and personnel year after year you knew what you're going to get from a Sean Dyche Burnley team but right now in the relegation zone with seven games to go after Everton's point last night they are four points adrift of safety and as we know last week Burnley decided to replace Sean Dyche and now they got the interim manager Michael Jackson in charge you know when a manager gets sacked and people are like, oh, that was a bit of a surprise. But when you think about it, it really wasn't. This was a managerial sacking that I think shocked every single Premier League watcher. I don't think anyone saw Sean Dyche getting sacked. He was the longest serving manager in the Premier League. He'd been in charge for around 10 years. He'd performed above expectations for years and years and years and years and years at Turf Moor. They even finished in seventh place one season uh, several years ago. Shoestring budget, you know, close knit group of players, got the best out of them, no doubt about it. I think it was an absolute shock seeing him get replaced. And, well, it might prove to be a gamble that pays off come the end of the season, or Burnley might have shot themselves in the foot. I guess we're going to find out as the season comes to its close. But Burnley are just a brilliant team to do a Premier League career mode with. Now, if you are looking for a project, if you're looking for an RTG, if you're looking for a challenge and a team that needs a major rebuild. Is there anyone more suited to that in the Premier League than Burnley? I don't think so. Now, as I show you the squad here again, there are a four-star team, but they're a really aging team. Oh, and I called them a challenge. I meant it. Finishing a mid-table in Season 1 and reaching the last 16 in the Cup. It's certainly doable, no doubt about that. But as we've seen this season, battling relegation, if you get off to a poor start, you might be struggling to climb out of the drop zone. They've got so many players with their contracts that come the end of the year. And let me tell you, this is one of the most aging teams in the Premier League. So transfer list here. Phil Barsley, 36. Aaron Lennon, 34. Jack Cork, Eric Peters, Dale Stevens, and Matt Loughton, all 32. Jay Rodriguez, Ashley Barnes and Ben Mir, 31. Goodmanson and Kevin Long are 30. And Matej Vidra is 29. All of those players I would recommend putting on the transfer list. Quite simply, with Burnley Football Club, Sean Dyche is now being replaced. If you've taken over... It's time to change everything at Turf Moor and go for what I'd call a hard rebuild. That's right. There's no room for mercy here. There's no room for sentimental reasons. Even players like Ben Mee are going to get sacrificed. Yep, it's time for a major, major rebuild with Burnley. It's time to sell half their first team squad and take them into the future. The future is now old men. That's what you say to the lads on the transfer list. We start off with bids for Goodmanson and Peters. Also for Ben Mee as well. I've always been a huge fan of Ben Mee, such an underrated defender uh, for Burnley for all the years. But I'd sell him, you get around eight and three quarter million for him. Definitely take that. He's in his 30s right now, and his decline is going to be really quick as well. Uh, we sold Goodmanson to FC Cohn for 3.2 mils. The Icelandic midfielder left us. Eric Peters, the Dutch left back, went to FC Nantes for 1.85 million as well. And we had a bit here for Dale Stevens, too, 32 years old, a former Brighton midfielder, only 73 rated. And what you'll notice is we 
we don't get much money for these players at all. They're very small transfer fees that we're receiving for these players, but at the end of the day, most of them have got one year left on their deal. Most of them, well, pretty much all of them apart from Ritej Vidra are in their 30s. Doesn't matter how much money you get. If you can only get valuation, just take the money, get their salaries off the books, and it's time to start the rebuild at Turf Moor. So with Burnley, as we know, their recruitment policy over the years, they've tended to look for homegrown players, though this season they did branch out a little bit, signing Maxwell Cornet, great signing, of course, and also Wout Weghorst, who came in to replace Chris Wood, who was sold to the Magpies in January. But for the most part, they do tend to look for their British players. And the first signing I make is a new centre-half. If you're going to sell Ben Mee, 78 rated, you want someone to replace the long-serving defender. My number one target is this guy, Ben Godfrey, from relegation Rivals Everton, a former Canary, now a Toffee, 23 years old, so around nine years younger than Ben Mee, but 77 rated with 85 potential as well. Ben Godfrey is a tremendous young centre-half to buy in this year's FIFA career mode. I would snap him up from Everton. You want to spend too much over the valuation, around 25 to 26 million pounds, and again, with 85 potential, he is going to nail down a first-choice centre-back spot right from the very first season and always be your star centre half. Uh, we sold Dale Stevens to Strasbourg, as you can see, and also sold Matt Loughton to Arsenal. I thought this was really interesting is selling him to the Emirates Stadium. I think we've got five and a half mil uh, for Matt Loughton, valued at 4.5 mil again. He's a decent arrive back at 76 overall, five and three quarter million, sorry, but he's 32 years old, and that's what you've got to remember. These players, they're not bad. You know, most of these players are in their mid 70s, and that's okay for a Premier League team looking to be a mid table side, but it's all about building for the future with this. Burnley side. All of those players I showed you on the transfer list are going to start declining in the very first season. You want to take Burnley into the future. So even if you're signing players who might be lower rated than the players you're selling, for example, Ben Meals are rating higher than Ben Godfrey, you know that as the years go by, they're going to get so much better. And it's the same in this case as well. We signed Tariq Lamptey, the former Chelsea Academy graduate uh, from Brighton for £9 million pounds, plus a big sell-on clause too, and tied him up for five years on a 20 grand a week contract as well. And Tariq, as you would have seen, is a couple of ratings lower than Matt Loughton, 74 overall. But as you'll see the age, he's currently... 12 years younger. He's over a decade younger than the player he's replacing. So at 74 overall, you know he's going to get much better. He's got 84 potential, and I always recommend Lamptey for a Premier League career mode if you're looking for a right back. Get this guy on defensive wide back development plan ASAP, you know, to get the defensive work rate up to high, and also train the very low strength as well, but solid right back for all the years to go by with Burnley, and a great successor for Matt Loughton. Uh, we also sold Jack Cork to FC nonce if you've been watching me for a while you know this is quite painful but I had to do it I've always loved Jack Cork high energy model pro but we sold him to FC nonce once again we won't get much money for the guy but getting his salary off the books most important thing and looking to build for the future we sold him for 3.35 million pounds and the player I'd replace him with once again we're looking for players who aren't as good currently but are going to be much better as the years go by the player to replace Jack Cork and Dale Stevens oh what a young talent this guy is and Aston Villa fans will be pained to see him leave but in the game you can get him for valuation it's Jacob Ramsey of Villa Park 8.5 mil we spent on Steven Gerrard's young prodigy really really great young talent very very good player with a very high ceiling as well Jacob Ramsey has 86 potential so you'll see that he was lower rated than Jack Cork right now but being over a decade younger with super high potential and dynamic potential could get into the high 80s as well it's definitely worth doing. So, yeah, Jacob Ramsey was my following signing for Burnley. Solid player to come as the rebuild continues here at Turf Moor. As we continue to look to sell the remaining players on the transfer list, we had a bit for Ashley Barnes here, uh, the long serving striker. Once again, 31 years old, 73 rated, not a bad squad striker uh, behind Weghorst, Cornet, and also Jay Rodriguez as well. But whilst you won't get much money for him, he's in the final year of his deal. Just get his salary off the books, get a little bit of cash and look to reinvest in a younger player to replace him. So Barnes went to Bologna and a player to replace Ashley Barnes with, well, a rival of Burnley's Blackburn Rovers, a 22-year-old Chilean icon now, Ben Brereton 
Diaz, he's now known as. Yeah, Ben Burrows and Diaz of Blackburn Rovers uh, having a great season at Ewood Park. But he's out of contract at the end of the season. You can get him for under the valuation. We got him for 7 mil plus Matej Vidra, who I couldn't get any transfer offers for. So Brereton and Diaz coming in for a reasonably low transfer fee and a player we couldn't sell as well. And despite the glitch in the negotiations here, this deal did go through. Ben Brereton and Diaz, our new forward in. And what I do with Brereton and Diaz as well, uh, the six foot two striker with really really good pace and a good finish on him as well is I would actually move Cornet out to the right hand side and start Brereton and Diaz up top alongside Werkhorst. You know both very physical strikers. Wow is very tall as we know. Brereton and Diaz also has height at six foot two and a little bit of strength at 80 strength too. So two very physical strikers there and I'll have Cornet using him on the right hand side as a left footed player as an inside forward like McNeil is on the left hand side. So Bren and Wow would now start up top. Aaron Lennon the veteran would drop to the bench and Cornette would move out to the right-hand side. That's what I'd prefer to do with this Burnley team. Uh, one of my final sal uh, sales was this guy here, Kevin Long, 30 years old, 71 overall. You don't need this guy. Obviously, we sold Ben Mee and uh, obviously we're going to sell Kevin Long as well. But we've got Tarkowski. We just signed Godfrey as well. And of course, we've got Nathan Collins in from Stoke. You don't need this guy. Sell him for whatever money you can get. We've got 1.7 mil. That's fair enough. And a player I'd replace him with is this guy right here, Callum Doyle of Sunderland. You can get this guy on a really cheap deal because obviously Godfrey and Collins are very young both in their early 20s both having potential that's above 80 overall you don't need like a superstar young center half who's amazing now or has a super high ceiling this guy is more than good enough as a fourth choice because Tarkowski at 28 he will give a new contract to still has two or three years before he starts to show signs of decline you just need a squad center half that will grow nicely in the background he'll barely play in the first two or three years but eventually he'll become your third choice and a decent bench player. Doyle, you can get him for under a million pounds and he's 64 rated but at 17 years old has 80 potential as well. Very strong, good jumper and he's 6 foot 3 so he's got a lot of height as well. Yeah, this guy is a fourth choice centre half. He'll barely play in the first two or three years but he'll grow nicely in the background and be ready in a few years time to be a bench centre half to replace James Tarkowski. So the final sale I believe I negotiated was this one here. Jay Rodriguez Sending him to St. Mary's here for, I think it was around three million pounds, 3.2 million pounds perhaps. Uh, Jay Rodriguez, again, not a bad striker at all at 74 overall, but at 32 years old, once again, the key with Burnley is that their squad is just too old, man. There's just too many veterans. There's too many seniors in this team. You've got to take Burnley into the future because these guys are going to show signs of decline in the very first season. So you won't get much money for them. Their valuation are going to plummet as the years go by as they just get worse and worse. We sold into St Mary's for £3 million pounds and as I made a couple more signings with this Burnley team, as we had around seven to eight million pounds remaining, I signed Brennan Johnson from Nottingham Forest. Fantastic local lad who represents Wales on the international stage now. Uh, of course, the uh, the young winger having a great season at the City Ground. Many people do believe if Nottingham Forest don't get promoted, he'll be in the Premier League next season, regardless at a different club. He's a fa fabulous young talent, uh, 20 years old, 71 rated in the game with 82 potential, so grows 11 ratings. Perfect long-term successor for Aaron Lennon down that right-hand side. He's probably going to retire in the very first season. You can get him for under the valuation of around £3 million. So, yeah, really good wing-up. Very, very pacey. Very good dribbler of the ball. Super agile as well. And he can run for days with any stamina. He's got a four-star week for two, which is very nice. As we filled out the bench here with Burnley, we were sign Antonio Blanco of Real Madrid. 21 years old, 71 rated. I just needed a cheap midfielder to come in and Blanco you can get him for under valuation because he is out of contract at the end of the season so Carlo Ancelotti will let the young Spaniard go for under valuation. We spent 3.2 mil his wages are reasonably high for someone who's just 71 overall but he'll still take a pay cut regardless and as a squad midfielder he'll do alright in the first couple of seasons playing in midweek and cup games and he's got 83 potential as well so he'll grow pretty nicely. He and Jacob Ramsey will do pretty well as long term successes for Ashley Westwood and Brownhill as well 
world are only a few ratings lower than the pair and they are several years younger than both of them as well both in their early 20s uh, right now so the final signing I would try and make is this guy obviously selling Jay Rodriguez and Ashley Barnes and giving away Mateusz Vidra as well we did sign Brereton Diaz we might want a new backup striker uh, for this Burnley team here at Turf Moor Cornet can play up top so you know you've got Cornet Weghorst and now Brereton Diaz too as striker options but you might want a good young striker to develop for the future and you can't really get much better than this guy if you're looking for a bargain you can get it for around a million pounds it is the Spurs young wonder kid if you will a Dane Scarlet we spent 1.1 mil to get this guy and whilst you look at the overall and think 64 overall is he really good enough for Premier League football right now well possibly not to begin with but this guy has got 86 potential so if you're feeling brave like I was put this guy on the bench as an impact sub. He's got a great finishing stat and attacking position stat to begin with, just 17 years old. He's only going to get better. If you get him a little bit quicker, this guy's going to be a perfect impact sub. Pacey coming off the bench, running at tired legs, young, energetic forward. I really like the idea of him being third choice striker here at Turf Moor. So in the end with Burnley in a crazy rebuild, look at the sales here. Nine players left for £31.6 million pounds and every single player was 30 or older yep the future is now old men sorry thanks for your service but a rebuild began in the summer window and we did practically everything and as for the signings as well we signed eight players for 57 and three quarter mil so it was a net loss of around 26 million but when you look at the talent coming in here Scarlett and Ramsey two great young English talents with 86 potential Ben Godfrey coming into the starting 11 has 85 potential Tariq Lamptey also in the starting 11 with 84, Blanco of 83 potential, Ben and Brennan have 82 potential apiece and Doyle with 80 as well. It's a really aging Burnley team. You've got to do a rebuild here at Turf Moor and it's such a fun team to use if you're looking for a challenge, a long-term project and a major rebuild right from the very first season. So as per usual, we'd simulate the end of the season, see how Burnley would get on and as you can see... Well, we came towards the end of the season, and I'll be honest still, we had a pretty decent mid-season as I was watching through the simulation, so I thought we'd be safe. That's the most important thing, staying above the bottom three. And as you'll see, we were well clear of the drop zone. Finished in 12th place in the end with 49 points, 14 wins in 38 games. I saw during the simulation, we had a great run around mid-season, so more than comfortably safe as Liverpool uh, won the title this season in the game. But yeah, a 12th place finish for Burnley. And we looked at the teams we finished above in the first season too. It's pretty impressive. Finished above Wolves, finished above Brighton, finished above Crystal Palace, Southampton who went down. Actually a really solid first season at Turf Moor but again not really unsurprising. This isn't a bad Burnley team at all. It's a four star one and again if you bring in the young talents to replace the senior players they're going to get better than the players they started or you started off with anyway because they're far younger and have far higher potential as well. So as I run you through the top scorers assists and clean sheets charts here uh, in the Premier League for season one. You'll see how we got on in the Cups as well. Obviously, the Carabao Cup doesn't count towards the objectives, but I thought I'd show you anyway. We were not so like Preston North End on penalties at Deepdale, so obviously not really too fussed about that. As the EFL Cup doesn't count towards the objectives. Liverpool won it like in real life. And as to the FA Cup, we were asked to reach, uh, reach the last 16 in the first season, but really, to me, I wouldn't worry too much if you don't do it. We didn't. We were knocked out by Bournemouth chasing promotion this season to the Premier League uh, in an FA Cup fourth round replay. So, last 32, one one round shy on the board and wanted us to get to, but to be honest here, I wouldn't worry too much about it. As I always say, if you hit your league objective, then nine times out of ten you're safe. We did that with a very comfortable and respectable 12th place finish in season one. And when you look at the team here as well, it's only going to get better when you make those signings. And it is kind of hard to say goodbye to players like Ben Mee, Jack Cork, for example, long serving players who have provided years of good service at Turf Moor. But now that Sean Dyke has been sacked, you can tell that Burnley are looking to build for the future and have a major major change after so many years of a similar style of football and a very similar squad as well well that's why I recommend Burnley for a career mode this year if you're looking for your next Premier League challenge they're such a challenging team 
They're a long-term project if I've ever seen one. They need a major rebuild. They've got their own identity, mainly looking for homegrown players. You can either change that or maintain it. And it's a really fun team to make your own at Turf Moor as the years go by. As you'll see the squad here developing in the first season with the rebuild we did. Treat Lamptey and Ben Godfrey growing four ratings in the very first season. Very impressive for our new defenders. Blanco went up by a couple of ratings to 73 overall. Jacob Ramsey grew three ratings in the first season to 77 overall. He is going to come in to your first 11 in the first season and be your starting midfielder for years and years and years, if not all the years you're at Turf Moor. He's such an amazing buy in this year's Fever Crew. My Brennan Johnson also grew three ratings as well, as you'll see the team develop so nicely in the very first season. And a mid-table finish is very respectable for Burnley as well. I couldn't recommend Burnley more, i got to be honest. And the timing is perfect as well with Sean it's just being sacked an aging team with over 10 players with their deals that come the end of the year and so many players in their 30s as well yeah Burnley as a long-term RTG as a long-term project a hard rebuild required and a club you can form your new and own identity with Burnley are a perfect team to do a FIFA crew mode with this year. I definitely recommend them. Had a lot of fun rebuilding their side in this episode. But that will end today's episode of the Design for guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you had not please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.